Fiend's choreographer in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. We just prepared for my trip to the celebration of Harry Potter in Orlando. I'm definitely going to leave my wand, so I'm heading to the studios just outside London where all the movies were filmed. It's very exciting because Warner Brothers have preserved all the key sets, costumes and props. I now have them on permanent display in the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. I can't wait to see everything again. Well, how do you know my name? Well, we know everything about the Harry Potter films here. Well, I'm going to the Harry Potter celebration. I'll leave my wand. Follow me. We have all the original sets, props, and costumes, so should we have them too? So cool. Welcome to Hogwarts. It took the Amazon trainers over six months to train the hours to deliver the wizard post. And the props department actually created lightweight brooms such as the ones that you've got here, and the hours actually delivered these in the great hall. Paul! Come this way, there's so much more to see. Well, are these the actual props used in the film? Everything is 100% used in the film. It's really amazing. The ceiling is in fact this model that we've got here. Bellatrix's teeth, you see those? She wore these for filming. Obviously, Bellatrix has spent a lot of time in Azkaban, so I don't think she would have had a toothbrush. Coming up to the Gryffindor Boys Dormitory. The staff here are incredible. They're so enthusiastic. Oh, well, well, I'm over my And They seem to really enjoy sharing their knowledge. Yeah, it's all the principal castle. played a big part when it came to writing broomsticks. I couldn't resist having a go with them. Wait a second, this guy looks familiar. sets especially built for the film and guess what a lot of them are right here on the back lot Ollivanders that reminds me I'm here to get my wand Where am I going to start? I will. Can I help you with anything? Um, well, I'm looking for my wand, actually. Well, there are quite a few wands in here. There's a wand box for every single cast and crew member that worked in Harry Potter films. That's over 4,000 wands. I finally got what I came for. <laughs> Plus a few things I didn't. This has been a fantastic experience for me. I've brought back a lot of happy memories. And I wasn't alone. Everyone seemed to be really enjoying this amazing experience. It was amazing. Like, I just saw everything. It was so oh, brilliant. I loved every bit of it. It's amazing! I love it. It's one of these things that I never ever thought I'd get to experience. And I got to experience. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it, like, my whole life. Being here really, it just makes you feel as if you're a part of it. It's magical. To know that the Harry Potter film series lives on for all of us, right here where it was all created. Now let me just see if I've still got what it takes. Ladies and gentlemen, have your wands at the ready and welcome all the way from London, the wand choreographer Paul Harry.
I want to hear you guys get nice and loud. of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and I created and basically invented the physical language for fighting with the ones that were subsequently used in the entire franchise. I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about that today and to tell you how that came about because only people involved in the films know how that came about so now you will know after today. Basically, I had worked with David Yates three times before uh, he became the director of the last four Harry Potter movies. And actually, I saw Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in a cinema in Bangkok. And when I got back to London, uh, David and I met, we, we went out for a drink. He, I knew that he was going to be doing the um, Order of the Phoenix, and so we had a discussion about there being no dancing in the Order of the Phoenix, and therefore, unfortunately, there was nothing for me to do, and I wouldn't see him for a year and a half. So, um, that was that, and then one Friday afternoon, I was driving to a play that I'd choreographed, and my phone rang again for the millionth time that day. And I was late for the play, and I looked at my phone like, David Yates. A bit weird, he can't want to go for a drink, he's doing Harry Potter. So um, I answered my phone and David said, oh hi mate, I said, uh, hi David, and he said, oh hi mate, he said, I've got a job for you. I said, but we've had this conversation, you're doing Harry Potter, there's no dancing in it. He said, yeah, it's, it, it's a bit complicated, can you come into Leavesden where we're shooting the films? And the, this was, I remember this was a Friday and I said, well, I'm going to Asia on Wednesday, and he said, ah, oh, is that written in stone? And I said, well, for Harry Potter, probably not. So, um, <laughs> uh, on the Monday, I went in, and they showed me the storyboard uh, of the, the entire sequence of the end of the Order of the Phoenix. And David explained to me what he had in mind. And basically what he'd identified was, well, the first thing was that he was, A, obviously he'd seen it and read everything that had already gone, but also he had some knowledge about what was coming. And so he identified that a physical language needed to be created for fighting with the one. Crucially, because where the film franchise was heading to was that some um, of the wizards who were better at magic would be able to execute magic without a wand, such as Voldemort disarming Harry during the battle at, uh, in the atrium without a wand. So therefore there had to be something physical, there had to be something that made one wizard better than another, other than they went to Ollivanders and bought a better wand. You know, there, 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 there had to be a reason why someone was better at magic. So, um, what David initially asked for was one movement for one spell. One physical movement for one spell. So, obviously, I went away, I read all the books again, I watched all the movies again, but with a completely different eye to just seeing it on a plane or something. And after three weeks I went back and I said, David, I can't, I can't do what you want me to do. I can't, uh, I, I, I can't do one movement for one spell because every spell has already been done with little or no physical action in a previous film. So I, obviously I can't undermine that. But what I can do, given who's done what up to now and given what's coming, I can create uh, a technique in the same way that ballet has a technique or kung fu has a technique. I could create a set of positions for wand combat from which all of the choreography that we need to do 
can be executed. Now David referred to dance extensively, because obviously I'm a choreographer, so 90% of what I do is, is dancing. Um, and in, this, in, the, in the conception of this, he referred extensively to this being like a dance. He wanted it to have grace and artistry. He didn't want it to be a mortal fight. Uh, it had to reflect the fact that they were 600-year-old wizards. Uh, and also we had to accommodate the fact that some were better than others. And why was that? And also we had to incorporate the different physical styles of the characters. For example, Jason Isaacs' uh, physicality was clearly very different um, as Malfoy to, Siri, uh, to Gary Oldman's physicality as Sirius Black. So all that had to be taken in, into account in the creation of the physicality for one combat. So that's what I did. And essentially the sequence of the, the death of Gary Oldman's character, the Veil Room sequence, is a real-time piece of choreography from beginning to end, executed from beginning to end, like a dance. There's a master of that. There's a full master, wide shot master of that sequence, just in the same way there would be a, a master of a, of a dance in a, in a ball, in a, in a movie. The atrium was slightly different because they were storyboarded uh, movements that resulted in massive effect, obviously, ultimately, the blowing up of, of the atrium. Uh, and so, but again, I used uh, extensively dance movements. The movement that uh, Voldemort uses to uh, fire the shards of glass was a Spanish dance movement called the Banderillas, where they, it, it, it mimics the killing of, of the bull, the final moment of the killing of the bull. And I used that. And also the rope of fire the creation of the rope of fire, which it was in the storyboard. Again, I used the dance movement, which is usually done with a partner, called the rope spin. Um, but the, the, I, that was sort of the key. The rope of fire was sort of the key. I realized how I could take uh, uh, what I needed to do in the direction that I ultimately took it. So that's how that came about. Uh, initially, I, I was going to be called the choreographer, but uh, uh, it, it was actually uh, David Barron, what, uh, one of the producers of the movies, who said, "But Paul, if 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 you just call you, if you just call you the choreographer, people might think there was a dance and it was cut. So let's let's th think of something else." So we discussed it endlessly, and we came up with choreographer wand combat. So apparently, I am the only choreographer of wand combat in the world. Uh, <laughs> And um, I, I, I'm here. And that leads me nicely. How many of you have a wand? Okay, to start with, everyone with a wand, stand up, please. And anyone who feels like pretending they have a wand can also stand up. Right, so initially, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through. Wand Interactive. Okay, I'm going to take you through the five attacking positions that are in the Wand Interactive. Out of that, I'm going to select about six people to come up on stage, and then I'm going to take you through more of that and teach you the corresponding blocks, and then something else is going to happen which you don't know about yet. Uh, but when I choose you, only choose, uh, only allow yourself to be chosen if you happen to come up on stage and be photographed and so on and so forth. So, okay, the first, uh, as I said, I had to take into account the previous films. As you all know, in the third movie, there's a mock duel between the characters of Kenneth Branagh and Alan Rickman. There was a, a, a nod to fencing, so I had to take that into account. So, the first position, if you, any of you have been to dance class, it's second position plie. If any of you have done Kung Fu, it's horse dance. So bend your knees with your feet slightly apart, take the wand above your head, shoulder down with a really clean curve above the head. Aim the wand directly at the enemy. Bring the wand forward at the head and whip it back. Let's see you all do that. At me! At me! Very good! Very good! Above your head! Above your head! Higher! Wide space! Lay it back! Very good! Dude! Above your head! Yeah! 
The shape, the form, shoulder down, there has to be a really clean curve here. The best example of this, a perfect example of this, was the shot that ultimately David chose to use for the killing of Sirius Black. The form of Helena Bonham Carter at that point is exactly as I set it. It's really perfect. It's a wonderful shot. If you're a tennis player and you fire a beautiful shot down, uh, down the line, that, the form of her position was exactly that. It was a winning shot and it was fitting to uh, be the shot that kills Sirius Black. Once more, first position. Above your head. Plie. You're, 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 you're going to blow up the screen. Aim at me. Ready? Bring the one forward and whip it back. The second position, and people in the seats are going to have difficulty with this, but the front row, no problem. Bring your body, turn on the, on the if you're right, if you're right handed, turn on the left leg, bring your body through and twist. Now crucially, crucially, in the box, what do you have to do to make the spell successful? The first lesson, switch and flick. So make sure that as you do that, there is a switch and there is a flick at the end of the movement. Now the finality of that is what makes it a successful spell or not. If you point the one and you say the name of the spell, it will have a, a, a reasonable effect. If you get your body behind it and you have the whole thing behind it and the switch and the flick, it will be better and more powerful. So, the people that can, let's go from the first position to the second. Ready? Stand by. Action! Not bad, not bad, very good. Okay, from here, you're going to bring your left leg forward. This is all if you're right handed, reversed if you're not. You're going to bring your left leg forward, protect your centre, make your centre as narrow as possible, and bring with the wand across your body on a, a narrow centre. As much as this way, inwards, the other way, yes. Right, but don't shoot the plant. Shoot me. That's it, good. Right, but that's not... <laughs> you're, you're, you're protecting yourself. Because remember, the great wizards don't need the wand. They can actually disarm without. You're very good. Uh, good, okay, but not, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like you don't like me and you're telling me. <laughs> okay, so, positions one, two, three. Stand back. Clean curve above the head. Action! One, two, three. Not bad. Stay low, stay low, stay low. Stay, stay quite deep here, here. As much as low as you can, that's good. Okay, whip, circle the hand this way. The switch of the flick goes inwards. Don't turn it this way. Otherwise it's like, I don't know. It's rubbish. Okay, from here. Then, uh, the next position was, I, I incorporated it, frankly, because it was in the storyboard. There was a drawing of, of a Death Eater firing a shot behind his back. And this uh, was in the, uh, the sequence uh, where in, in the Room of Prophecies where Ivana was actually. How many of you have seen, you've seen Ivana today already, right? Well, that, that whole sequence, there was a, a drawing, a storyboardy drawing of a Death Eater firing a shot behind himself. So I incorporated that. So we're going to go from here, from the third position. You're going to turn your body and fire it behind you, but be careful not to shoot the ground though. Make sure it goes directly where you want it to go. No, not so good, that one. Okay, all good. Right, let's put these three together, four together. This is one. So slowly, bring the right side forward. Turning the wand inwards, across your body, protect your centre. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. 
and fire behind you. And then keep turning to the right in the same direction and fire behind your back. So this, this sequence, this five movement sequence, you're able to, uh, I, I was able to create all of the choreography. I was able to do anything I needed to from all of these positions. Like the five positions of ballet, with these are the five positions of one combat for attacking. So step back, above the head. One, right side through, two, cross the body, three, behind the back, four, keep turning, five. Okay, all together, faster. Stand by, ready? Above the head, clean curve. We're going to go a little more detail into that. We're going to teach you the corresponding blocks for something else. So, okay, very good. One, one moment. Show me the first position, everybody. Two. Yes. Your life is at stake. 
<laughs> look where you look, that's it. And angle and fall with your back, bring the right side through, long, clean lunge line. Not bad. Turn your body through. You're very chilled out. Okay, now, from here, bring your left side through, protect your centre, stay low in plie, and whip the one forward with the switch and the flick on the end of it. Don't go upwards though. Switch it inwards. This way. This way. Yes. Not, not on the electric wires, at him. Yeah, this way. That way. Not bad, not bad. This way. Turn it that way. Inwards. Everybody turn it inwards. The other way. Yes. That way. Okay. You're clear on that? Turn your body to the left. Uh, just, uh, sorry, to the right. Keep turning. Swish it behind you. Flick it behind you. Directly where you want to hit. So be careful of that. It's very cute, but switch that way. Directly. Yes, good. Keep turning. And behind your back. There. Okay, let's put those five together. Stand by. Plie. Above the head. Ready? Action! One, two, three, four, five. How about that? Show me. Show me. Let me have a look. Stand by. Ready? Plie. You're wearing your shoes in the ceiling. Ready? I'm also you are. Look, we can take care of where your wand is going. Here we go. Ready? Action! One! Right side through! Two! Left side through! Three! Turn! Behind the back! Four! Keep turning! Are you drunk? <laughs> Turn the other way. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, now. Now. Two goes spells, no, sorry, two goes physical movement for the spell, for casting a spell were corresponding blocks. So the corresponding blocks above, above your head to, to block this one. So from there, just block, still turning it inwards, block it that way. This way, high to the left, high to the right, low to the left, and low to the right. I'm just explaining this very quickly because we have to get a move on. So, high block, high left, high right, low left, low right. Yeah? So if I fire at you, above your head, you can block me. That's it. I would have killed you, but... <laughs> so, and also we had um, extensive discussions with the, the SFX department about what would constitute wand shrapnel. What would happen, when, what exactly would happen when one wand blocked a, another spell? What would come off that? How, what impact would that have on the, on the surrounding buildings and so on? So, just let me see the blocks because something else is going to happen now. Ready? So, block one above the head to block this. Block two, high, high right, this way. High left, low right, low left. Now, out of those 10 positions, I choreographed the entire end of Order of the, Order of the Phoenix. Every movement that they do is traceable back to one or other of those positions. Right, so I would like to just clear you off for a moment, but don't go away because you're coming back. So off you go to stage left. Just for a moment, please. Give them a big round of applause, everybody! Now, I have someone with me here today who also knows a little bit about ones. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please give a fantastic round of applause for Mr. Weasley, Mark Williams! Welcome to thanks to the power of Blue Power. He appears in all but the first four. He is an Order of the Phoenix member, and today he is known simply as the Ministry Enforcer. So, Mark, 
Mark, tell us about your experience holding your wand. <laughs> I, I was uh, in early, as they say. I was an early adopter of wand technology. Uh, back when I started, we were given, a, you, you didn't have a choice, you were just given a wand. And go, there's your wand. And mine was um, wood. Back in the day, they were wood. They, it since became an industry. They became composites and were uh, decided they changed their weight. What was strange is it kind of mimicked weapons technology, which kind of it became the whole department, you know, the one department, which was in a secret shed and used special things that you weren't supposed to know. But um, yeah, but the. Uh, when Helena was killed by the wife, I saw her in London and she said, How is everybody? How's it going? She said, I really miss my wand. And I think a lot of us would say that that was, um, we all felt that a bit. It was like your, uh, it was like your. Do you know anybody know the Dark Materials trilogy? Your wand is like your demon, you know? It's like, it's your thing, bit three musketeer. So yeah, we loved our wands, if you know what I mean. I oh, know exactly what you mean, yeah. <laughs> and it, so, it, with the actual wands, I mean, I had a rehearsal one to create the stuff on, but you... Yeah. You, you always, obviously, you had the, your actual one. Yeah, so you yeah, had because, because when I started, it, 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 there wasn't, yeah, I mean, when you came on, it, it finessed and it became much more elegant, but it, originally, and if you look at the first ones, it's pretty brutal. I mean, it, it's like a sort of, I mean, it is a sort of sword stick. It, it's like kind of, it's, it's a lot of that smashing. Whereas when you came on, it became about a focus. Um, but but, you had, you, but you, as you said, you know, some people are better than others, and I think that the whole the whole series of films was like that. You, it's very allowable for yeah, it to, yeah. for it to change, you know. Also, there was a war on, you know. <coughs> some people had to do a bit of practice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you actually, you guys had to sign for your ones, right? In no, no, no. They were Gary. Uh, everybody who did all eight films was called a lifer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, although I did do the first film and Julie didn't do the fifth, but together as a couple we qualify as lifers. But one of the lifers was a standby props guy called Gary, who, who collected every single one every single day. And he'd be like, You want? And there was a box, it was like a kind of, it wasn't like going back to the kind of munitions thing, it was a lockable. A steel box, and they all went in there at the end of the day. And I think probably there was a residual feeling that at the end of it we'd get our wands, but no chance. Well, well, actually, <laughs> I did get mine, but uh, but mine was otherwise known as a stick. I'm afraid. It was a, my, uh, my rehearsal one was a bit of wood. A bit of dowling. Yeah. So, but, Mr. Weasley. Yes, sir. Do you happen to have your one? Sir, first thing we learn at the ministry is never to be unarmed. Well, well, we have an army prepared. So, half of them are yours, and half, you can have this one, she's drunk. <laughs> and half of them are mine. Now I see you're picking. So, let's do the old line in the sand. And you're my army. And they're your army. Behind me. And we are going to improvise. Diamond formation. A duel. So spread Two out. Use the whole space. One behind the block. Hide behind the club. You block. You are the side. And you be. Are you ready? Any order. 
Why are we down the number? I am left handed. Why are they you left handed? You're all right handed. Right, I'll go outside you. Oh, okay. You. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Wait. He will attack no, first. No, no, no. Block I love you, Johnny. You yeah. two. What? Excuse what? me. Do you be in? No one like him. Excuse me, John. Come on. I'm last. What do you want to do? Get last then. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. I'm coming out to. Oh, wait. Okay. He's taking this. Okay. On a minute. Oh, thank you. Okay. Wait, he just wants to be a black king. Okay. He's going to attack first. He will. I know he will. You ready? I'm just trying to be in position one. Any order. Any order. Stand by. Action! But it's kind of <laughs> exciting to play, is it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what, uh, uh, I mean, as I explained, the, the detail in the storyboard was immense. Um, yes, we improvised a lot, but when we finally shot everything, everything was detailed down to the last T. You know, it was belt and braces, everything, really. Uh, Every, every shot had to be able, obviously has to be able to be replicated over and over and shot from every angle. So the, you know it wouldn't be. Kind of... Nothing to worry about here. <laughs> okay, well we have some questions to answer, I believe. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. They were good, weren't they? they were She's staying. They were really good. They were very good. <laughs> hey, have a seat. I stayed. I stayed. That was a heck of a battle, you guys just had. <laughs> um, you know, we, we actually, we, we don't have any time for questions today. Okay. We're actually in that battle. That, that's, a, that's a great way to end, right there. Did you guys enjoy that? Guys, please one more time give it up for Paul Harris and Mo